we jump in, we we're going to start off with some of the uh, the Hallel songs. And we'll do some at the beginning and some at the end. Uh, Y'all, know, who knows what which ones are the Hallel songs? What's that? Psalm 113 through 118. Absolutely. Yeah, I don't know if they want to go trying to sing Psalm 119. Yeah. <laughs> They'd be there a while. Yeah. So let's read through a few of these at the beginning. This is Psalm 113. It says, Hallelujah. Praise, O servants of Adonai. Praise the name of Adonai. Blessed be the name of Adonai from now and forever. From the rising of the sun to its going down, the name of Adonai is to be praised. Adonai is high above all nations. His glory is above the heavens. Who is like Adonai our God, enthroned on high, who brings himself down to look upon heaven and upon earth. He raises the poor from the dust, lifts up the needy out of the dunghill, with the princes of his people. He settles the barren woman in her home as a joyful mother of children. Hallelujah. And then 114. When Israel came out of Egypt, Jacob's house from a people foreign speaking, Judah became his sanctuary, Israel of his dominion. The sea saw and fled. The Jordan turned back. The mountains skipped like rams, the hills like lambs. Why was it, O sea, that you fled? O Jordan, that you turned back. O mountains, that you skipped like rams, O hills like lambs. Tremble, O earth, at the presence of the Lord, at the presence of the God of Jacob, who turned the rock into a pool of water, the flint These are all ones that are said as they are going up to Jerusalem and then also ascending the steps into the temple. Psalm 115. Not to us, Adonai, not to us, but to your name be the glory, because of your love and your faithfulness. Why should the nations say, Where is their God now? Our God is in the heavens. He does whatever pleases Him. Their idols are silver and gold, the work of human hands. They have mouths but cannot speak, eyes but cannot see. They have ears but cannot hear, noses but cannot smell. They have hands but cannot feel, feet but cannot walk, nor utter a sound with their throat. Those making them will become like them, everyone trusting in them. O oh, Israel, trust in our life. He is their help and their shield. O oh, house of Aaron, trust in our life. He is their help and their shield. O oh, you who fear our life, trust in our life. He is their help and their shield. Adonai has been mindful of us. He will bless. He will bless the house of Israel. He will bless the house of Aaron. He will bless those who fear Adonai, the small together with the great. May Adonai increase you more and more, you and your children. May you be blessed by Adonai, maker of heaven and earth. The heavens are the heavens of Adonai, but the earth he gave to the children of men. The dead do not praise Adonai, nor do any who go down into silence. But we, we will bless our mind, both now and forever. Hallelujah. Okay. Well, everybody should have one of these at your, at your place. Uh, it depends on whether or not you want to follow along in here, but I'm going to have all of the, the things up there, because sometimes I know people can get a little distracted looking up and looking down and doing things like that, but this is a probably a very reduced Haggadah. It does not have a lot of the, the commentary or a lot of the traditional stuff. This is a very slimmed down version 
Um, so some of these can go for four to six hours, easy. So again, this is a kind of an introductory Haggadah. Um, How many first timers? Okay, yeah. got three. Well, I like it. So this will be fun, but this is this really goes into a lot of the the symbolism of Messiah in the Passover. And I know from my own experience, the first time this was pre presented to me was uh, it really, really hit me hard. I'll just put it like that. And it really made me start looking at things uh, from a more starting to wonder about the Jewish perspective and the Messianic perspective of things. Because this is all, this is the first of the Moedim for the for this cycle coming out of Leviticus 23, and this is uh, like a mikra. It's like a gathering. It's a dress rehearsal in many ways, uh, because this really does begin the telling of the story of redemption. So I'll be on, I guess, page three. This is preparing for Passover. So it says, during the days before Passover, leavened items are removed from the home to make it ready. These include all breads and cakes, anything that contains yeast. Preparation begins with a thorough cleaning, culminating in a ceremonial search for leaven called Berichat Hametz. Let us also ready our hearts for the Passover Seder, the order of service. Tradition teaches that in each generation we must consider ourselves as having personally been freed from Egypt. And as we prepare for this experience of personal redemption, let us put far from us the leaven of sin hidden within our hearts. Haggadah means the telling. Passover is a story that has been retold for thousands of years. It is a story of miraculous transitions from slavery to freedom, from despair to hope, from darkness to light. Its greatness is the greatness of God. Its timelessness comes from the eternal truth of His involvement with His people. And as God cared for the children of Israel in ancient times, He cares for all who are His today. So upon the table is a Seder plate. Holding the ceremonial items of Passover, there are bitter herbs, a roasted egg, a sweet apple mixture, parsley, and what should be a, a bone there, but don't let Vicky try to tell you any concocted story of it being my fault why they're not there. Um, we won't get into that. Uh, curious things, yet all part of the telling. So let us allow our senses to fully participate, taking in the sights and smells, tasting each ingredient, listening to every word. Let us see, hear, and feel the truth of God's love. One of Messiah's last earthly acts was the celebration of the Passover. Gathering his friends in a small room in Jerusalem, he led them in a Satan. He says, I have really wanted to make, to, wanted so much to celebrate this Seder with you. And he passed the foods among them, and it was there in celebration of the deliverance from Egypt, Egyptian bondage that Yeshua revealed to them the mystery of God's plan of redemption. He spoke to them of his body and blood. He explained to them that he would have to die. It was no coincidence that Messiah chose the Passover for the setting of what is called by some communion or the Lord's Supper. For in the story of the Passover lamb, Yeshua could best communicate the course he would be taking over the confusing hours that were to follow. Here, as we participate together in the Passover Seder, may we recall once again God's great redemption. Um... The next section we had a little bit of a, a challenge with, because this still is Shabbat. Uh, we actually called up a, a, a friend of ours uh, who came from an Orthodox background and asked kind of what they do about this, about when, when it occurs, the 14th is on a Shabbat. Right, right. Um, and so she said, you either, you either already have a fire maintained that you've kept lit, you know, from Friday night, hmm, that you use to light your candles, or 
you wait till you wait till after sunset, like after you finish the meal, because as we're eating, uh, sundown is supposed to be happening, right? That's roughly the time period of that. Um, so we'll 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 light the candles later after after the meal. But um, this is we'll so we'll address these things. We'll come back to this, and I I should have moved these up as well, but but. So we were trying to figure out what to do with that because this is this is an unusual year where it happens on on Shabbat. So we'll come back to that in a little bit. So next we see the the four cups of wine. It says, as the Lord spoke these words of encouragement to Moses, He revealed to His servants the plan by which He would redeem the children of Israel. So let's say this together. I will free you from the forced labor of the Egyptians. I will rescue you from their oppression. Redeem you with an outstretched arm. I will take you as my people, and I will be your God. And at Passover, we celebrate these promises of redemption by drinking from our cups four times. With each cup, let us remember the union that God desires. And so it's talking about, well, we'll, we'll get to these. The first one is the cup of sanctification, the Kedish cup. And so it says, I will free you from the forced labor of the Egyptians. So let us lift our first cup together and bless the name of the Lord. Everybody pour a cup. with his Talmudim, his disciples, and said to them, Take this and share it among yourselves, for I tell you that from now on I will not drink the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. So let us all drink of this first cup of Passover. about this, you know, given all the health issues going on, because it's usually with a shared bowl that goes around the table, shared towel and all that fun stuff, so. That's 
what the bowl and the towels would have been for. Yeah, it would have been water that you just kind of bring your hands in there and wipe them and then wipe on the towel and that gets passed around. Um, but instead, what we were going to do, well, go ahead and show the next one. So we have that water there. And, but you do get to see this in the life of Yeshua at the Gospels. And it has the verse there, John 13, 5. So go to the next one. It says, Then he poured some water into a basin and began to wash the feet of the Talmudim and wiped them off with the towel wrapped around him. And he said to them, Do you understand what I have done to you? You call me Rabbi and Lord, and you are right, because I am. Now if I, the Lord and Rabbi, have washed your feet, you also should wash each other's feet. So we were going to... This is, a, a, I guess, a tradition we've been starting at our house, singing a verse from uh, Give Us Clean Hands. So we'll have a, a verse of that if you'll sing it with us. We bow our hearts slavery came up to God. That's Exodus 2, 23. So it says, Passover is a holiday that comes in springtime, when the earth is becoming green with life. This vegetable, called the carpus, represents life created and sustained by Almighty God. And so, but life in Egypt for the children of Israel, the life of pain, that's this middle section here, suffering in tears, represented by the salt water. So let us take a sprig of parsley, dip it into the salt water, remembering that life is sometimes immersed in tears. Then we'll say the blessing.
And it does get better, I promise. But it does get a little worse first. <laughs> <laughs> and so next comes the four questions the ma nishtana when your children ask you what do you mean by this ceremony this is what you're supposed to say and so this is really the purpose and the function of what, we're, what this is all about is passing on this knowledge to future generations so this is your first children's sermon. You know, you see a lot of churches that won't have a message or have a service without having a children's sermon, right? Anybody grow up with a church like that? Mm -hmm. This is where they get it from. Right? This is the, the first example, I should say, of that. But it's something intentional about all of this which is supposed to pass on to the future generations. Does anybody... Under 30, since that seems to be the... Want to try the Hebrew? <laughs> Anybody want to try the Hebrew? <coughs> Can you three girls maybe stand and, and switch out on those questions? On the English? Yeah, on the English. Okay. Read the first <laughs> Go ahead, Mariah. On all other nights, we eat all kinds of vegetables. On this night, why do we only eat bitter herbs? On all other nights, we do not dip our vegetables even once. On this night, why do we dip them twice? On all other nights, we eat our meals sitting or reclining. On this night, why do we eat only reclining? So now comes the answer to the four questions. He says, you are to observe this as a law, you and your descendants forever. So it is both a duty and a privilege to answer the four questions of Passover and to recite the mighty works of our faithful God. We have four tables. So that will come up maybe in a little bit. So we start off with the matzah, the unleavened bread. On all other nights we eat bread with leaven, but on Passover we eat only matzah, unleavened bread. As the children of Israel fled from Egypt, they did not have time for their dough to rise. Instead, the hot desert sun baked it flat. But even more than that, the scriptures teach us that leaven symbolizes sin. So it together. Don't you know the saying, it takes only a little chametz to leaven a whole batch of dough. Get rid of the old chametz so that you can be a new batch of dough, because in reality you are unleavened. For our Pesach lamb, the Messiah, has been sacrificed. 1 Corinthians 5, 6 and 7. Then it goes on to say in verse 8, so let us keep the feast. And he was encouraging Gentiles to keep the feast. Because they wouldn't understand the symbolism or the significance or the difficulty with it if they never actually tried to do it. If no Gentile had ever tried to do... How many of you this was your first time trying to clean your house of leather? How easy was it? What, was it easy? <laughs> no, it, it, was, it was different, you know, just really trying to look down and, and go through everything. And I started understanding all, this, all these things we didn't know that had leather in it. You know, that's the unknown sin in our life, too. Mm -hmm. You know, that, that, that really hit home on that one as I was going through all the things, looking at the ingredients. I was like, wow, I've, I've never done this and just think about all the unknowns. Yes. And then really trying to be careful. The first time was very eye-opening of how much leaven is in everything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's really the point. In the midst of my cleaning out of some things, <laughs> I came on another mm -hmm. interesting thing, a cereal that I've been eating for I don't know how long, ends up having pork my product in it. Oh, I don't know. Those lucky charms get you every time. <laughs> Is that what it was? No. Well, we got to know now, because what are we eating that cereal? Beware of frosted shredded wheat. 
Really? Oh, I love it. I love it. I used to love it. Wow. Oh, well. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. Seriously. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like something I would say, though. <laughs> you can't get on YouTube. Would you say so. <laughs> so, again, if a, a Gentile did not grow up in this culture, they would have never done this before. So it would only make sense for him to be telling them to do it so they can learn the lesson. And by us in traditional Christianity, having grown up, never participating in this, we never really learn the lesson of what unleavened bread is trying to communicate to us. Okay? Uh, and that's also part of the, uh, the, the cleansing of the temple that Yeshua does himself. He's getting the leaven out of the Father's house, uh, which is what the firstborn son is supposed to do. He's supposed to help the Father. Find the last bit of leaven and get it out. So it says, During this season of Passover, let us break our old habits of sin and selfishness and begin a fresh, new, and holy life. So then we have the matzah, which is already breaking. This is that bread of haste. This is the bread of affliction the poor bread which our fathers ate in the land of Egypt. So let all who are hungry come and eat. Let all who are in need share in the hope of Passover. And you'll notice there are three pieces of matzah wrapped together for Passover. And this is something that has been done for thousands of years, even before Yeshua came. Uh, there are various explanations for this ceremony. Through The rabbis call these three a unity. Some consider it a unity of the patriarchs, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Others explain it as a unity of worship. You know, the priests, the Levites, the people of Israel. It says, we who know Messiah can see in this unique triunity of God, Father, Son, and Spirit. Three in, in one. So in the matzah, we can see this picture of Messiah. And you see how it is striped when you take a look at it. Let's say this together. But he was wounded because of our crimes, crushed because of our sins. The disciplining that makes us whole fell on him. And by his bruises we are healed. So see how the masa is pierced. You should be able to be able to see through it if you look up at the light. Let's say this together. I will pour out on the house of David and on those living in Yerushalayim a spirit of grace and prayer, and they will look to me whom they pierce, and they will mourn for him as one mourns for an only son. And so it says, you know, removing and breaking the middle piece. The second piece is what is removed. The middle piece is what is taken so just as the middle piece of bread of affliction is broken, everybody get your middle piece out. And is there any significance it being the second or middle piece? Yes. What would that be? I'm, I'm kind of wondering. Can't figure that one out. What do you say? He crucified with the transgressors. One was on his right and left. Mm, that's one way, absolutely. But also, it's the Son has always talked about the second person. You know, all of that that language at least is built into and around all of these things. It carries over in ways that we don't expect and never even heard or knew. So the middle piece was the bread of affliction is broken. Messiah too was afflicted and broken. So let's break this in half. One half is now called the Alphacolman, which means the coming one. And it is wrapped in a white cloth just as Messiah's body was wrapped for burial.
And, you know, just at the same time that the Lamb is slain in the temple, at about the ninth hour, as Mark tells us, this is when Yeshua is saying it is finished. Uh, no, you, you'll keep that piece out for uh, right now. Well, we're not going to cover it up or something. We're not, we're only going to hide one of these. We're not going to have like five Ophthalmans <laughs> lurking about. <laughs> so we don't have any any young children at this time. Do we want to make them have to cover their eyes and hide so they can't see it? Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> so then you you hide the off the And again, it's wrapped in cloth. It's essentially, by hiding it, it is essentially buried. And uh, I've seen, I, I, I wish I could find where I saw this, but I, I read it where it talked about some of them will, will lay a pillow over it and cover it and call that like a stone. And I can't find that again. I found that one time, and I was like, oh, I've got to hold on to that, and I lost it. Okay, girls. You know, oh, my eyes are <laughs> You were looking the whole time. <laughs> so just as I have hidden the Alpha Coleman, so Messiah was placed in the tomb and hidden for a time. But just as the Alpha Coleman will return to complete the Passover Seder, so the sinless Messiah rose from the dead to ascend into heaven. So then we have this other piece of the, the matzah from the other half. And you break off a piece and distribute it around the table. it does feel very awkward to be sitting up here in the front. <laughs> okay, so now we get to share this piece of unleavened bread at Passover. So let's hold this up and say the blessing. Baruch atah Adonai, Elohim melech haolam, avosim lefem min haretz. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who brings forth bread from the earth. So this is the bread of affliction. Next comes everyone's favorite part. Are you serious? <laughs> This is the Maror, the bitter herb. So answering the second question. On all other nights we eat all kinds of vegetables, but on Passover we eat only Maror, bitter herbs. As sweet as our lives are today, let us remember how bitter life was for the children of Israel in the land of Egypt. So you have, should have on your table some of the horseradish there. So the Egyptians came to dread the people of Israel and worked them relentlessly, making their lives bitter with hard labor, digging clay, making bricks, all kinds of field work. So you don't want to get another piece of matzah. And scoop some of the maror onto the matzah. I promise it's not hot at all. You got your fingers crossed or something. <laughs> <laughs> Just get a big old scoop. Scoop at your own wrist. Yes. Did I use the horseradish if I want to be careful? And I think the tradition is, isn't the youngest person in the room supposed to get the biggest amount? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't fall for it. Or is it the oldest? <laughs> the oldest? Let's just be sure. Both of them. Good idea. <laughs> so, as we scoop some of the moror onto the matzah, 
Let us allow the bitter taste to cause us to shed tears of compassion for the sorrow that our ancestors knew thousands of years ago. So let's say this blessing. Baruch atah Hanai, Eloheinu melech haolam, asher kishanu bidvaro bitzivanu al achilat maror. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who has set us apart by his word and commanded us to eat the bitter herbs. It's just a little bit. Anybody from seconds? Now, this is also a cheap medicine if you run out of allergy medication or any type of sinus you know, stuff, this will clear it right up. Don't even have to get a prescription. Good, I need that for this. Come on, we'll just a jar. All right. Yeah, this is, this is supposed to be unpleasant. So then we have the next page, which is we dip, dip twice with the carousette. So on all other nights, we do not dip our vegetables even once, but tonight we dip them twice. We've already dipped the parsley into the salt water. So then we have uh, on your plate, you should have some of the carousette, which is the apple mixture. Says the children of Israel toiled to make treasure cities for Pharaoh, working in brick and clay. We remember this task in a mixture called carousette, made from chopped apples, honey, nuts, and wine, or grape juice. Let us once again scoop some bitter herbs onto a small piece of matzah. So get another piece of the matzah bread. And scoop up some more of the horseradish. Everybody say yay. 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 <laughs> but this time, get some of the horseradish, but also get in some of the, uh, the uh, carousel. The apple. The apple stuff. So do both. Get as much of the apples as you think necessary. <laughs> Some of y'all are trying to hide the removal of carol set or removal of the uh, oh uh, horseradish, and by inadvertently it's kind of bumping it off the bread with your with your carol set, right? Right? You're trying it, aren't you? Shh, shh. No comment. I'm not able to comment. But bread. So, we, let's say this together. We dip the bitter herbs into the carousel to remind ourselves that even the most bitter of circumstances can be sweetened by the hope that we have in God. Me. And they became upset and began asking him one after the other, 
You don't mean me, do you? It is one of the twelve, he said to them. Someone dipping matzah in the dish with me. So again, the last night with Yeshua, the last supper, you see moments where they tell you something that a Jewish audience would know it's almost exactly where they are in the course of the meal. So dipping matzah in the dish with me. And so there's that bitterness right in the midst of this sweet and special time. The next question is, tonight we recline. On all other nights we eat either sitting or reclining. But tonight we eat reclining. The first Passover was celebrated by a people enslaved, a people that were not allowed to sit down. As slaves, they were always the ones standing and serving the Egyptians. So having a place at the table meant that you weren't one of the Israelites. So tonight they get to sit, they get to recline like they are one of the guests, like they are one of the, uh, the important free people. So let's say this together. Once we were slaves, but now we are free. The children of Israel were instructed to eat the Passover in haste, their loins girded, their staffs in their hands, their sandals upon their feet, awaiting departure from the bondage of Egypt. Today we all may recline and freely enjoy the Passover Satan. Messiah said, Come unto me, all you who are struggling and burdened, and I will give you rest. Next we have the story of the Passover. It says, I have remembered my covenant. So the story of Passover is a story of miracles, a story of redemption, a story of the mighty power of God to overcome evil. And so we've got four tables out there, so I need one person from each table to read. So let's start over here at this table. The Lord had promised the land of Israel to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Yet here were their children in Egypt. The Pharaoh who had come to power feared them. These foreigners in our midst are prospering and have grown numerous, he thought. Suppose they join with our enemies and turn against us. Pharaoh decided to exert greater control over this people, imposing harsh and bitter slavery upon the Israelites. Still, God blessed his people in strength and number. I'll go to second Pharaoh grew more frightened and ordered every baby boy among the Israelites to be drowned in the, the Nile River. One Israelite couple hid their little boy for three months. Finally, entrusting his future to God, they set him in a basket and placed him upon the river. His sister Miriam watched as he floated downstream. Coming upon the basket, Pharaoh's daughter took pity on the child and chose to raise him as her own son. She called him Moses, meaning drawn from the water. Any y'all in the table? In the back. <clears throat> Moses grew and became aware of the travail of his people. One day, in a rage, he lost control of himself and killed an Egyptian who was beating a Hebrew slave. Fleeing the palace and the eye of Pharaoh, Moses became a shepherd in the land of Midian, far from the cries of his suffering brothers. <coughs> the Lord, however, <coughs> excuse me, saw the affliction of the children of Israel and heard their groaning. He would raise up a deliverer to lead them out of bondage. It was then that he appeared to Moses in the midst of a bush that burned with fire, yet was not consumed. Moses drew close and listened as God commissioned him to go to Pharaoh, fearful and reluctant. Still, Moses agreed to bring God's message to the king of Egypt. Let my people go. Okay. Next is the cup of plagues. It's also called the cup of deliverance or the cup of, of judgment. I've even seen it called the cup of instruction. It's talking about I will free you from the forced labor of the Egyptians. So Moses left the wilderness to return to Pharaoh's palace, the very place where he had been raised. He returned with the message which the Lord had given him. 
But God himself warned Moses of the resistance that he would encounter. So I know that the king of Egypt will not let you leave unless he is forced to do so. But I will reach out my hand and strike Egypt with all my wonders that I will do there. After that, he will let you go. So God sent plagues one by one, yet with each plague Pharaoh hardened his heart. The Egyptians became afflicted with discomfort and disease, bane and blight. Still Pharaoh would not relent. With the tenth and most awful plague, God pierced through the hardness of Pharaoh's impenetrable heart. For, for that night, I will pass through the land of Egypt and kill all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both men and animals. And I will execute judgment against all the gods of Egypt. I am Adonai. So let us fill our cups a second time. So as y'all want to start filling up the second cup. It says a full cup is a symbol of joy. And indeed on this occasion we are filled with joy at God's mighty deliverance. But let us also remember the great cost at which redemption was purchased. Lives were sacrificed to bring about the release of God's people from the slavery of Egypt. But a far greater price purchased our redemption from slavery to sin, the death of the Messiah. And you might want to put a napkin or something in the middle of your plate. It says, as we recount each plague, you dip your, one of your, your pinky, your little finger, into the cup and allow just a drop of the liquid to fall reducing the fullness of our cup of joy this night because of the plagues. So there's all these things. Let's say these together. We have the plague of blood, frogs, frogs lice, lice, beasts, beasts cattle, cattle disease, boils, hail, hail locusts, locust, darkness, darkness and the death of the firstborn. It says, do not drink the cup at this time. You, know, you should also notice, and if you haven't already been through a study on this, that each one of the plagues targets one of the Egyptian deities. It's a fascinating study to go through, because that's the statement that he made at the end of Exodus 12, 12. I will execute judgment against all the gods of Egypt. This is... Everything that happens is an attack on Egypt's belief system and showing the superiority of the God of Israel. So next is the Passover lamb. The Pesach. The blood will serve as a sign marking the houses where you are. When I see the blood, I will pass over you. It says Rabbi Gamaliel, teacher of Rabbi Saul or Paul the Apostle, taught that in recounting the Passover story, one must be certain to mention three things. The unleavened bread, the bitter herbs, and the Passover lamb. So let's say this together. We have eaten the matzah to remind us of the haste with which the children of Israel fled Egypt. We have tasted the bitter herbs to remind us of the bitter slavery they experienced there. And you would have a, a bone there if it weren't some strange story that goes along with that. Um, so the, the roasted shank bone represents the lamb whose blood marked the houses of the children of Israel, signifying their obedience to God's command. Uh, it's called a zaroa or an arm. You know, not everybody has lamb uh, at their Passover Seder. In fact, most Jewish families don't do lamb because they don't want to have anything confused. Uh, as uh, somebody might think that this was an offering or a sacrifice and that it was done away from Jerusalem. So there's a lot of reasons why Jewish families won't have uh, a shank bone or a lamb uh, to eat. They might have a chicken bone or something there. Uh, when we started doing this, we always got a small you know, piece of lamb because this is about you know, taste and smells and other things like that. And so we wanted the kids and everything to know this is what this tastes like. And so they actually, that's part of their favorite part of it, is getting to taste a little bit of the lamb uh, once a year, because this can be expensive.
But, so, uh, we have two readers. Can I have two volunteers to read? Okay, got George, you want to do one? Okay. Anybody over there want to do two? No. Yeah. Go ahead. On the tenth day of this month, each man is to take a lamb or kid for his family, one per household. Your animal must be without defect, a male in its first year. You are to keep it until the 14th day of the month, and then the entire assembly of the community of Israel will slaughter it at dusk. They are to take some of the blood and smear it on the two sides and top of the door frame at the entrance of the house in which they are to eat it. Okay. Before reading the second one, what's the significance of, significance of the 10th day? How does that mirror or parallel something in Yeshua's life? Not at this time, but there's something about the tenth day. What happens on the tenth day in the last... The lamb is brought into Jerusalem on the tenth day. And what is Jesus doing? What is Yeshua doing on that tenth day? It's the, what we call a triumphal entry. So the day that the lamb is brought in is the same day that Yeshua enters into Jerusalem. And the, the lamb comes in. And that's one reason why the priests and everything are upset at him and his disciples for making a ruckus because they're drawing attention away from the Lamb and the events that are happening at the temple. And so then what happens over the next four days, you're to keep it until the 14th day, what do they do during those days? They make sure that it's... Okay. They examine it. They make sure it's blameless and spotless and doesn't have any defect in it. Uh, and what is happening to Yeshua over the course of those days? Is he not being examined? Are they not questioning him? Does the, the scriptures not over and over say we find no fault or basis of accusation against him? You know, they bring forth false witnesses, but they can't get their witnesses to agree. So they cannot make any charge against him. And so he is found to be a spotless lamb. Okay, reader two. That night they are to eat the meat, roasted in the fire, they are to eat it with matzah and marol. Here is how you are to eat it. With your belt fastened, your shoes on your feet, and your staff in your hand, and you are to eat it in hurriedly. It is at a nice pace on The blood will serve you as a sign marking the houses where you are. When I see the blood, I will pass over you. When I strike the land of Egypt, the death will blow when I strike you. So we are reminded by Moses that it was the Lord himself who redeemed the children of Israel from slavery. And Adonai brought us out of Egypt with a strong hand and a stretched out arm with great terror and with signs and wonders. That phrase translated stretched out arm, guess what that word is? It's the Zaroa. It's the same one that's used in talking about with the, uh, the, uh, the shank bone. It says, For that night I will pass through the land of Egypt. I am not an angel, and kill all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both men and animals. I am not a seraph, and I will execute judgment against all the gods of Egypt. I am not a messenger. I am Adonai. I myself am none other. So since the temple in Jerusalem no longer stands, lamb is not eaten at Passover, the shank bone reminds us, remains to remind us of the sacrificial lamb. The, the next part is the, the roasted egg, and, and some people have this and some people don't. There's different traditions and backgrounds on that. But the roasted egg has been added to the Seder. It's called the uh, Kagiga. I'm not... It's just Kag. Kag? Kagiga. Uh, it's the name signifying the special holiday offering. Uh, the egg is regarded as a symbol of mourning, reminding us of the destruction of the temple, the second temple. Um, and so it's, it's almost the opposite of what is used within traditional, you know, an egg within traditional Christian circles where it's a symbol of other things or joy or whatever else. It's supposed to be a symbol of mourning and destruction. Um, and of course the first and second temple were traditionally was destroyed on what day? The ninth of Av, the same day. Um, 
It's also, uh, well, I'll just it's also can be talked about in terms of a, a hardened heart that comes because when it's roasted, you know, it's put in the fire, it's, it's hardened like the hardened heart of Pharaoh, like our hearts are and how our hearts need to be changed and taken from hard, made hard by sin, but we need that new heart. So, let's say this all together. We who have trusted Yeshua the Messiah Believe he is the Lamb of God, our Passover. Like the ancient Israelites, we know that it was God himself and not an angel. God himself and not a seraph. God himself and not a messenger who achieved final redemption from sin and death. God himself, through Yeshua, who takes away the sin of the world. And the next is the song Dayenu, where it means it would have been sufficient. It says, They will gush forth the fame of your abounding goodness, and they will sing of your righteousness. Um, it says, How great is God's goodness to us for each of his acts of mercy and kindness. We declare Dayenu, and we'll say these together, and then we actually have a small sample of what the song sounds like. <coughs> So it, that we declared Diana, it would have been sufficient. So if the Lord had merely rescued us, but had not judged the Egyptians, Diana, if he only had destroyed their gods, but had not parted the Red Sea, Diana, if he had only drowned our enemies, but had not fed us with manna, Diana, if he had only led us through the desert, but had not given us the Sabbath, Diana, if he had only given us the Torah, but not the land of Israel. Amen. The Holy One, blessed be he, provided all of these blessings for our ancestors, and not only these, but so many more. Let's sing this. Um, let's move ahead one more. Ilu hoti hoti anu hoti anu mi mitzrayim hoti anu mi mitzrayim dayenu day dayenu day dayenu day dayenu 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 day dayenu day sing the song all together, right? <laughs> Anybody want a solo on that one? No? No takers? Alright, well, let's... Uh, and there's a lot of verses to this song, by the way, that you could keep going with. But let's look down on the, on the page to the, the blessing. It says, Blessed are you, O God, for you have in mercy supplied all our needs. You have given us Messiah, Forgiveness for sin, life abundant, and life everlasting. Hallelujah. So now we have the second cup. Diana. Okay. 
Okay, this is where we get a chance to eat. And I hope we told everybody to make sure you snack beforehand a little bit, because it can be a long time. And would you say this is relatively short? Very short. Very <laughs> short. I used to say a good night. Yeah. So, but did we want, we, did we, what time is it? 7.53. 7.53? Sundown was a minute ago if we wanted to do the candles. So I'll turn back to the lighting of the candles. Page five. I've got matches so I can come around and they can light the candles at the real estate. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> As we kindle the festival lights and pray for the illumination of the Spirit of God to bring great personal meaning to this, our Messianic Passover celebration. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who has set us apart by his word, and in whose name we light the festival lights. As light for the festival of redemption is kindled by the hand yeah. of a woman, we remember that our Redeemer, the light of the world, came into the world as a promised seed. So, we're coming back to the supper. How many of y'all are too stuffed to continue? Oh. Oh, that's a possibility. <laughs> that was just the first course. <laughs> right, right. Everybody has to eat at least two more platefuls before the evening is over. Yes. Yeah, that was true. Oh, because we wanted to tell the bus. <laughs> well, so it starts off with this, with the uh, the Coleman. And being cut off from the land of the living for the crimes of my people, as Isaiah 53. So if y'all three girls want to go and try to find it, I'll give you a, a cup of peanuts. For your Come on. It's somewhere in this room. concept and uh, associated with it. And it is divided up as the Passover lamb was from the time of the Exodus until the destruction of the temple. It is said that the taste of the Afikoman should linger in our mouths. So Messiah broke the matzah and gave thanks to the Lord. So if you, everybody get a little bit of your matzah. Everybody you supposed to put some matzah on your napkin or a napkin. Get that one out. Yes, it matters. You have to get the exact specific one. One I said is going somewhere. It's right here. We'll just take a piece of There you go. But again, this is this is the some of the final things. So everybody got some? So I broke the matzah and gave thanks to the Lord. Baruch atah Adonai, Elohim, Melech HaOlam. 
on both Sinachem and King Haaretz. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who brings forth bread from the earth. It was then that Messiah added these words, This is my body which is given for you. Do this in memory of me. So let us now eat the matzah, meditating on the broken body of the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. Let us allow the taste to linger in our mouths. Next is the cup of redemption, where he says, I will redeem you with an outstretched arm. And, you know, this is in knowing the Seder, you know this is the cup that Yeshua picks up after the supper. I think it's the Mark that specifically tells us after the supper. I forgot to look. But let us fill our cup for the third time this evening. This is the cup of redemption, symbolizing the blood of the Passover lamb. It was the cup after the meal, hey, there you go, with which Messiah identified himself. Looky there, I told you it was in Luke. <laughs> so, let's say this together. I will redeem you with an outstretched arm. The prophet Isaiah reminds us, Adonai's arm is not too short to save. It is our own righteousness that falls short. Though the Lord searched, he could find no one to intercede. Therefore, his own arm brought him salvation, and his own righteousness sustained him. Yeshua the Messiah lifted the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant, ratified by my blood, which is being poured out for you. So just as the blood of the Lamb brought salvation in Egypt, so Messiah's atoning death can bring salvation to all who believe. So let's say this together. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech ha'olam, Borei Pri Adonai. Blessed are you, Lord our God, King of the universe, who is the creator of the fruit of the vine. So let us gratefully drink. Passover to announce the Messiah, the son of David. Before the birth of John the baptizer, an angel of the Lord said, And he will go out ahead of Adonai in the spirit and the power of Eliyahu to make ready for Adonai's people prepared. Later, Yeshua spoke of John. Indeed, if you are willing to accept him, he is Eliyahu, whose coming was predicted. So it was this same John who saw Yeshua and declared, Look, God's Lamb, the one who is taking away the sin of the world. 
And then I don't know if I have it in the back. I think I forgot to put it in there after all. Right. Well, <clears throat> yeah. Um, page 35. Page 35, if you want to see the music. John, you can get up and lay this. <laughs> <laughs> no. I, I, I vaguely remember the song. So is it. Everybody there? Eliyahu Hanabi. Eliyahu Hatishki. Eliyahu, Eliyahu, Eliyahu Hadiladi. Bim Yero Beyomegu. Yaho Aleyu. Bim Mashi.
And I don't remember this song. Anybody all know know this song? Not at all. So it, since we don't, nobody knows this song. The next year in Jerusalem. So we we have the alternative that we sang previously. Maybe next year. If you haven't heard this one. It's maybe new, but we've sung it a few times here.
Yeah. All right, and here's some of the, uh, the remaining Hillel psalms. It says, I love Adonai, for he hears my voice, my cries, because he has turned his ear to me. I will call on him all my days. The ropes of death entangled me, and the torments of Sheol found me. I found trouble and sorrow. Then I called upon the name of Adonai. Adonai saved my soul. Adonai is gracious and righteous. Yes, our God is compassionate. Adonai protects the simple hearted. When I was brought low, he saved me. Return to your rest, my soul. For Adonai has been good to you. For you delivered my soul from death, my eyes from tears, my feet from stumbling. I will walk before Adonai in the land of the living. I trusted even when I said, I am very afflicted. And even when I said in my haste, all men are liars. How can I repay Adonai for all his bounties? I will lift up the cup of Yeshua and call on the name of Adonai. I will fulfill my vows to Adonai in the presence of all his people. Precious in the sight of Adonai is the death of his Kedoshim. O oh, Adonai, surely I am your servant. I am your servant, the son of your maidservant. You have freed me from my bonds. To you I will offer a sacrifice of praise, and will call on the name of Adonai. I will fulfill my vows to Adonai in the presence of all his people. In the courts of the house of Adonai, in your midst, O Jerusalem. Hallelujah. Verse 13. How, does that, how else can you read that? I will lift up the cup of Yeshua. Psalm 117. Praise Adonai, all you nations. Glorify him, all you peoples. For great is his loving kindness toward us. And Adonai's truth endures forever. Hallelujah. So even in this one, the Gentiles are invited as part of the ascension of going up to worship and glorify him. Um, verse 18, 118. Well, what happened to that? Get your Bible. Yeah, we can't skip 118. No, sir. All right. Hey, you turn right to it. Psalm 118 says, Praise Adonai, for he is good. Because well, we've already kind of done a lot of this. <laughs> it's okay. For his loving kindness endures forever. Oh, let Israel say, for his loving kindness endures forever. Oh, let the house of Aaron say, for his loving kindness endures forever. Oh, let the house of those who fear Adonai say, for his loving kindness endures forever. Out of a tight place I called on Adonai. Adonai answered me with a spacious place. Adonai is for me, I will not fear. What can man do to me? Adonai is for me as my helper. I will see the downfall of those who hate me. It is better to take refuge in Adonai than to trust in man. It is better to take refuge in Adonai than to trust in princes. All nations surrounded me in the name of Adonai, I cut them off. They surrounded me. Yes, all around me in the name of Adonai, I cut them off. They swarmed around me like bees. They were extinguished like burning thorns. In the name of Adonai, I cut them off. You pushed me hard to make me fall, but Adonai helped me. Adonai is my strength and song, and he has become my salvation, my Yeshua. Shouts of joy and victory are in the tents of the righteous. Adonai's right hand is mighty. Adonai's right hand is lifted high. Adonai's right hand is mighty. I will not die but live and proclaim what Adonai has done. Adonai has chastened me hard, but he has not given me over to death. Open to me the gates of righteousness, that I may enter through them and praise Adonai. This is the gate of Adonai, and the righteous will enter through it. I give you thanks, because you have answered me, and have become my salvation. The stone the builders rejected 
has become the capstone. And it is from Adonai, and it is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that Adonai has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Hoshiana, please, Adonai, save now. We beseech you, Adonai, prosper us. Baruch Abad Hashem, Adonai. Blessed is he who comes in the name of Adonai. We bless you from the house of Adonai. Adonai is God, and he has given us light. Join the festival with branches up to the horns of the altar. You are my God, and I praise you. You are my God, I exalt you. Praise Adonai, for he is good, for his loving kindness endures forever. Amen. Amen. All right. How many of y'all feel Yeshua just a little bit better tonight? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Amen. That's the point. <laughs>